The episode begins as a boy, Haruhiko Ichijo narrates and describes Ruben's vase illusion saying that depending on how you look at it, it may seem to be two people facing each other. He mentions the Mueller liar illusion and says two lines are drawn that are the same length but the top one appears longer. Haruhiko talks about the checker shadow illusion, in which tiles A and B appear to be different shades, but when they overlap, you see that they are the same color. He says the human brain's cognitive ability is surprisingly iffy and unreliable, and if our brains were, for whatever reason to be altered, the world we perceive would become vastly different, and entities we thought were fictitious could appear before us in our reality. Just as he finishes his last sentence, a phantom pops up and flies to the screen saying, just like her. Haruhiko narrates saying that since an incident over a decade ago, human brains have undergone a drastic change, fact and fiction have intertwined, and a myriad of phantasmal entities have emerged into the world. He says he will elaborate on the details later, but this is the story of those of them living in such an age. Haruhiko struggles with sleep, and an angry fairy forces his eyelids open, making him toss her across the room. She tells him not to go back to sleep, and it's his fault for not getting up. The phantom shows him the time, and he jolts up and gets dressed while everything looks distorted. Haruhiko brushes his teeth and blows dries his hair and when he feels content with how he looks, leaves the bathroom. On his way out, he tells the phantom that if he is late, Mai will roundhouse kick him again. He runs to school, but the phantom tells him he's too slow saying he should leave reading and focus on sport. A blonde girl, Mai Kawakami fights a monster at the same time. Haruhiko enters a train. He gets to school and runs to the spot. Mai is fighting and she tells him he is late. Haruhiko apologizes for coming late, brings out a sketchbook to draw, and asks her why she's dressed like that. Mai says she was in the middle of getting changed. Some girls cheer Mai from upstairs and one of them asks if that is the phantom that has been interrupting gym class and wrecking the flower garden, and another girl affirms it saying the phantom is kind of a pain. The phantom, Ruru flies above them, and one of the girls asks if she won't go to help. Ruru says she is an expert observer, so she won't help. Other students watch from their class and ask if Mai and Haruhiko can handle it themselves, or if they should ask a better team for backup. Mai has an idea and finds a way to trap the phantom so Haruhiko can draw it and extract its powers. They win the fight to the full glare of both high schoolers and middle schoolers. Mai and Haruhiko are in shock when their teacher, Miss Himeno, tells them that they have earned nothing, even after defeating the huge phantom. Mai wonders how she will get by, and Himeno tells her to be patient. She will get more jobs for her. She dismisses them and tells them to get home safely. Mai's head is down on the desk, and the students make diverse comments as they pass by. Some tell her good work, and another wishes her better luck next time. Another student passes and tells Haruhiko not to get so down, that it rains sometimes and shines sometimes. Mai tells Haruhiko to stop sighing because he is letting all his happiness out, and he tells her she's sighing too. Haruhiko narrates, explaining that the Hosea Academy is a private school, and he entered its high school division in April of that year. He says his hobby is reading, and he goes to the library to read. Haruhiko says, the academy covers school from grade school to high school, but some students enter high school from other middle schools with diverse powers. Haruhiko walks home and stops in front of a cemetery, asking if it was always there. He says it is probably deja vu and Ruru agrees. They see some phantoms hovering around a girl, Izumi Reina, and he's about to go save her but she surprisingly eats them. Haruhiko is shocked and rushes to meet her so she can join their club, but she runs away. He meets her in school again, and begs her to join their club, because she's a phantom eater. She refuses, but he offers her lunch, and she follows him. After Reina eats a boatload of food, she asks Haruhiko to explain what he wants from her, and he narrates to her about the history of the phantoms, and how the virus spread, that made people see phantoms, and the special children born with powers. He asks her if she will join their club, but she's still skeptical and Ruru tells her that she can't say no after making them spend much. Haruhiko asks her to come watch their fight, and she agrees. Reina follows Mai and Haruhiko to battle, and after everything, Mai defeats the phantoms. Haruhiko forgets to buy a sketchbook, so Reina eats the phantoms up. They walk into the school and see a new student, Koito Minase, coming out of Himeno's office. Haruhiko narrates saying a phantom is an illusion but what exactly separates illusion from reality? He gives an example of Kant's critique of pure reason. Humans perceive the world through a recognition framework called categories, and biologically speaking, the human brain creates its own internal model of the world. He says what we call reality is a mere illusion created by our brains, and ever since the virus incident over a decade ago, human brains have changed drastically. Haruhiko stands in front of a screen and explains that monsters, spirits, and other beings, previously considered fictitious, have become visible to everyone. 
and they are called phantoms. Ruru flies to the screen and says, she is a phantom too. He ignores her and says, phantoms causing trouble are usually sealed, but that doesn't mean it is destroyed, and they may need only to be driven off. Haruhiko says, under certain circumstances, phantoms can reappear. Ruru asks what phantoms are. And Haruhiko says, some phenomena of the past could be attributed to phantoms, like the subject of today's episode, UFOs. He shows slides of UFOs and says, they were phantoms of old. Haruhiko says after they sealed the utility pole phantoms, Izumi Reina officially joined him and Mai on their team. He feels that now that they have another member, things are looking up for them. Haruhiko walks to school and shows Ruru that he has bought a new sketchbook. He says he has a special ability that lets him summon and seal phantoms by drawing them. But now that Reina the Phantom Eater has joined their team, they are better off with her handling the sealing. He says it means from that time, his sealing abilities won't be needed and to make himself more valuable, he should improve his summoning skills. Reina meets them at the academy and they talk. She mentions that Ruru and Haruhiko are close, but he denies it. Minase passes with a headset and Haruhiko stops her and introduces himself but she ignores him and walks away. Himeno tells them later that Minase is powerful, but turns down her request to join the club. She gives Mai and the others a task and tells them Minase is already headed there by agency request. Haruhiko asks if they won't be getting in her way, but Himeno says, Minase has had the powerful ability since she was little. She wants them to help her live a normal life in the school, and she also wants her to learn how to work with others. Minase gets to the factory and sees the robot that's now a phantom. Her powers don't work, and it is about to eliminate her when Mai kicks it. The others lead Minase away from the scene, and she asks them why they are there. Haruhiko tells her that Himeno asked them to come, and Minase says she doesn't need any help. There are many phantoms called multipliers, and Haruhiko says they have to get the main body before they can defeat the multipliers. Minasi's voice powers still don't work, and Haruhiko tells them that the robot phantom is emitting an inversion of Minasa's voice, and that is how it's dampening her parole effect. Haruhiko allows Mai to use her water powers. Haruhiko gives Reina a chance to eat up the phantom, and she eats them. Mai battles the phantom, while Haruhiko draws the phantom and seals it. Reina asks Haruhiko what type of phantoms they were, and if they were tool spirits and he says they are, but they multiplied and evolved by themselves, so they are different from the utility poles from last time. He says there is a lot to still know about phantoms, and anything is possible. Mai introduces herself to Minasi, and Minas compliments her skills. She compliments Reina's as well, and tells them that they'll split the earnings evenly among themselves. Haruhiko tells Minasi that she didn't compliment him, but she leaves. Reina starts to talk about her bills and how what she earned won't be enough for her laundry bills, and Haruhiko offers her his mum's clothes, so she follows him home. Mai and Reina take their baths at Haruhiko's house and eat dinner. Mai thanks him for the bath and asks him why he has a lot of books. They notice Ruru with a machine she calls a game console and realize it's a secret code. Haruhiko resets it and it goes off. After the others leave, Haruhiko charges the device and goes back to work. The next day, the girls ask him if he has gotten the machine working again, and he says he hasn't, but he'll try a bit longer. He figured he should fix the machine first, even if he's going to give it back to Alayashiki. Himeno gives them a task to go seal a phantom at a girl's dorm, and when they get there, they realize it is a peeping UFO phantom. Mai and Reina take off most of their clothes for the phantom to come, and Haruhiko summons what he thinks will be a demon beast but ends up being a cute dog. They defeat the phantom, and Reina also heals Haruhiko's finger cut. Minasi passes by and tells them that she was impressed by them the other day but not today, while at Haruhiko's house the machine comes on. Ruru flies in front of Haruhiko's computer and asks him if he doesn't get scared when his computer shows binary codes, and he tells her that it is important to keep backups of all your data, just in case. Ruru whispers that Haruhiko gets weird viruses from suspicious websites all the time, and he shouts at her to stop making baseless accusations. Haruhiko says what she just said is a lie and she's about to explain, but he covers her mouth. He explains that it'd be useful if human memory could be backed up, like computer data, there's actually research being done on that. He says the episode will be about memory. Reina and Haruhiko meet up with her and apologize for coming late because they were caught up at the convenience store. Mai tells them that they're pretty close, but Reina denies it, saying she just happened to bump into him at the convenience store. Haruhiko tells Mai that Reina didn't have to deny it so vehemently, 
and they walk in. Mai looks at them and thinks to herself that their team always screws up, but they'd redeem themselves soon. Mai is distracted, looking at some kids when Haruhiko calls to her. She tells them that she was just remembering herself, as a baby, and Reina asks her how she was. Mai says she was a shy kribabi and Haruhiko calls it a lee. Reina says she knows Mai was adorable, but Mai says she couldn't even hold eye contact, only one day though, and she remembers a special memory. They walk in, and a little girl with a teddy bear peeps at them, and asks the teddy bear if they're the same high schoolers from earlier. Mai, Reina, and Haruhiko take the train and discuss the phantom. Mai tells them that it stops people trying to cross the bridge in the evening, telling them to defeat it first. They get to the bridge, and Mai tells them that it feels somewhat familiar. A phantom appears, and Mai prepares to fight it, but it tells her that they're not ready to fight. She's still in shock when another phantom appears and tells her not to feign ignorance because summoning her there was their goal. Mai tells them that she's ready to give them a fight if that's what they want. Mai fights the phantoms, but they are undefeated, and Haruhiko has to summon the cute dog to distract them. They retreat tactically with Mai on Haruhiko's back. The phantoms tell her to come back when she's better trained. They'd be waiting. Next day at school, Mai vows to defeat those phantoms. She overhears two girls talking about their own phantom tasks. One says a phantom is making a mess of the park flower beds, and the other girl says they want her to take care of some noisy rock band phantoms. Haruhiko asks another student, Shosuke, where he's headed, and he says he's headed to the nature park, past the mountains because there is a giant terrifying tourist in the cave. Reina notes that everyone seems busy, and Mai says they have to come up with a plan. Ruru tells them that they need someone as strong as Mai, and they think who that could be. Mai trains them in martial arts, but only Reina seems to fight better. Mai says Haruhiko and Ruru are out of the question, and Reina is better since she knows self-defense. Reina promises to try and do her best, but Mai says she appreciates the sentiment, but she doesn't know how she feels about asking a girl to put herself in danger. She thanks her for her offer, but tells her that Haruhiko is easier to work with. Haruhiko says he can't learn how to fight so fast, and Mai says he just needs to train. Haruhiko comes up with an idea to copy Mai's memories to his so he can fight, and Himeno overhears them and says it is worth trying. Himeno asks if she can handle and document the experiment for her research, and she agrees. She makes them go to a bunch of places together, which she says will help them share memories. Reina keeps asking Himeno questions as they move from place to place. Their journey leads them back to the bridge, and Mai finally remembers what felt familiar about the place. She tells them about the two kids she met there when she was little. The phantoms have been disturbing the bridge they fight. Mai and Haruhiko hit each other and are finally able to share memories. Haruhiko sees the kids Mai spoke about earlier and tells her that they are the phantoms fighting them. Haruhiko tells them all that happened that day, but Mai's memories seem to have changed. The phantoms get angry because she doesn't even remember them, and they fight again. Himeno tells Haruhiko that he's Mai's backup to fight when she's in trouble. He starts to fight but he gets tired quickly because he doesn't have the fitness to match the skill. Himeno asks him to use the power of elements, and when he does, the phantoms are defeated. They leave and say they'll come back to challenge them. The little girl who has been following them admits that they're awesome. Later, since Mai's memories didn't leave, Ruru asks Haruhiko a bunch of private questions about Mai and she screams. Haruhiko is dressed in a traditional attire, and says human culture varies from time to time and place to place, but whenever and wherever a person is, you will always always find two tenets. He asks what it is, and Ruru says, eating and having fun. But Haruhiko ignores her and says, it's language and family systems. He says family's basic parts are parents and children, and that of course can also vary depending on time and place. For example, polygamy and polyandry. He adds that as for the relationships between parents and children, some societies separate birth from parenting. Mai and Haruhiko take Reina to an all-you-can-eat buffet, and she looks at the place with so much excitement as she introduces herself and says how she got there. Reina says as payment for dealing with a phantom, they got all-you-can-eat vouchers, and she's there today with her clubmates for dinner. Reina sighs and says, food is bliss. Ruru tells her she eats a lot and asks her where all the food goes, and she says she's not really sure, and orders more. She apologizes saying she got carried away. Haruhiko tells her not to apologize because she earned the vouchers. Mai says she has to eat and that they'll all come back there together another time. Reina smiles and thanks them. She says she smiles more these days but now that she's enjoying school, going home has become a bit sad. A motorcycle drives by and Reina calls to it 
thinking it's her sister. She remembers that Haruhiko told her that dusk is when monsters, or phantoms, have always appeared most often. And since she's a phantom eater, every now and then, she can use it to seal phantoms that have been causing trouble, but her parents don't take kindly to it. Reina stands at the bus station, and a strange-looking bus stops at her front. She enters the bus just as Manasi passes by. Reina finds herself in front of her house all of a sudden, and has a strange feeling. She enters the house and tells her parents that she's home. They tell her she's late again and ask if she has been getting involved with phantoms. The next day at school, Reina tells the others about what happened and Ruru says she was probably bewitched by a phantom. Reina says her heart felt very warm, then she felt really happy, like when she was with her sister. Minasi comes in and tells her that the bus she entered was a phantom and she has been possessed. Minasi and the others follow Reina to the bus station to wait for the bus, and Reina apologizes for bothering them. Ruru tells her that they are like a family, so it is no bother. Minas says she was there when the bus came the previous day, and Mai asks her why she didn't stop Reina from getting on it. Minazi asks if Reina doesn't have special abilities as well, and Mai stares at her. Just then a light shines on them, and the phantom bus appears. Reina, who is already possessed, enters the bus, and Haruhiko goes in to stop her, but ends up going with it when the bus disappears. Mai and Reina scream, but Minase asks them not to worry that they will definitely come back, but if this keeps up, Reina might not be able to return. Haruhiko tries to get through to Reina on the bus, but she seems like one in a trance. The bus stops, and Haruhiko is shocked to see that they have stopped at what looks like a magical land. Reina enters a hut, where two rabbits whom she calls mother and father, stay. Haruhiko looks through the glass window and sees that Reina now has rabbit ears, and she eats happily and recounts her day to the papa and mama rabbit. He breaks the window and asks her to snap out of it, but the rabbits run to hug him and tell him to join them for dinner. Haruhiko joins them, and he gets rabbit ears as soon as he eats the food. They take their bath, and the next day, they leave for school on the phantom bus. Haruhiko wakes up on the bus, and soon after, he and Reina appear in front of her house. Reina wakes up, and Haruhiko tells her that almost no time has passed since they got on the bus. Reina's father talks to her from a security camera at the gate, and Reina quickly asks Haruhiko to leave, which she'll explain the next day. The next day, Minaze says she recognizes the phantom, saying it's the type that possesses and traps people in their world. Mai asks Reina if she knows why the phantom chose to possess her, and she says she still hasn't told her parents that she's a phantom eater, and she joined the club. She says her parents can get her transferred from the school, and it's because of the way they act that her sister ran away. Haruhiko says the phantoms are taking advantage of Reina's feelings, and they follow her to the bus station again. But this time, Ruru and Mai get on. Ruru eats the food but doesn't get bewitched because she's a phantom but Mai eats the food by mistake and gets bewitched. The Papa and Mama, Rabbit call Mai Reina's long-lost sister, and they chat happily. Haruhiko snaps out of it and manages to get Reina out of it. She tells him that she has been waiting for her sister to come to reconcile with her parents. The Papa and Mama Rabbit ask Reina to come with them, but Haruhiko stops her from following them and they fade into thin air. Reina apologizes to Haruhiko and the others for the stress and they say, it's nothing. Haruhiko explains that the outbreak over a decade ago has had large effects on the human brain. People can now see phantoms, and there are children with special abilities. He says Manase is the protagonist of the episode, and she has a powerful ability that she commands using song. Ruru asks him if singing is that special, and Haruhiko explains that singing your favorite song stimulates the brain triggering the secretion of pleasure hormones, and it is effective in rehabilitation and serves as an aid to memorization. He says singing in groups can help make arduous tasks more efficient, and Ruru affirms, saying she has a friend who says listening to music makes his work more efficient. Mine stands in the middle of a highway and stops a fast-approaching train that has been possessed by a phantom. After she stops it, the driver comes out and thanks her, saying that they couldn't use the highway because of the phantom. The man wants to say something else, but Manase tells him that she will leave the rest to him and leaves. Everyone in class interacts, but Manase sits alone with a headphone, saying she always keeps her distance from others 
and that is how she has lived her life ever since her ability surfaced four years ago. She says she never joined any school club, and she spent her time dealing with phantoms, because she recognized that she was different. Everyone has lunch at the cafeteria, and Shosuke tells Haruhiko that he is lucky, because his teammates are all cute girls. Haruhiko eats, and tells him that he won't say, if he had them for teammates. He says Mai is violent, but Shosuke says, it doesn't matter because she is hot, and, again, he doesn't know about the Mina Sekoito type. As hot as she is, Haruhiko asks him about Minase, and Shosuke explains that apparently Minas was popular in class at first, but she's so distant and never agrees to hang out, so no one hangs out with her anymore. He says that as pretty as Minas may be on the outside, with a personality like that, maybe she's stuck up because her ability is so powerful. Haruhiko almost freezes when Minas appears behind Shosuke as he speaks about her, unknowingly to him. Ruru flies by and says hi to Minas, and Shosuke almost shits his pants. Haruhiko introduces Shosuke to her and tells him that he's in their club, but Minasi ignores them and walks away to sit by herself. Himeno gives her a task to seal a phantom that has been destroying bird and rabbit hutches around schools, and she feels their academy is next. Himeno says it's pretty simple, and she thought Minasi might be interested. Minasi says she will do it. Mai, Haruhiko, and Reina walk home and see Minasa pass by. Haruhiko runs to her in a bid to apologize for what happened earlier. Minasa gets to the rabbit hutch and finds the little girl with a teddy bear there. She asks her if she's in charge of the hutch all by herself, and she says she is. Just then the phantom appears, and Minasi says she arrived in time. Mai, Reina, and Haruhiko follow Minase to the hutch and see the phantom. Minase fights the phantom, and the little girl with her gets scared and asks her teddy to help her. The teddy becomes larger and fights the phantom. Minase ends up losing her voice abilities, and the phantom disappears. The others run to her, and Reina tells her that she can't fight the phantom. Haruhiko talks to the little girl with the teddy bear and asks her if she has special abilities, and she says yes. Minase tells Mai to get out of her way because she will defeat the phantom herself. Himeno says Minase needs to rest, so she'll give out the task to another team, and Minase walks out angrily. Mai asks the little girl, Kurumi, if she wants to join, and she stutters. Meanwhile, Haruhiko follows Minase, and she asks him to go back. She says she needs to defeat the phantom on her own, and she ends up leading them to her house. The next morning, she drinks a cup of hot tea and sings to check if her voice is better. She opens the door and Haruhiko asks her how she's feeling. She asks him if he slept there, and he says no, that he arrived there that morning. They patrol the area which the Phantom frequented and meet Mai and Reina on the way with Kurumi. Kurumi tells them that she always admired them. Mai and the others meet Haruhiko and Manasi on the way and Mai tells her that she'll get the phantom first. She walks away, and Haruhiko follows her. She says she senses the phantom, and they go to it. Minasi fights, but can't defeat it, and it leaves, and she tells Haruhiko that she'll surely find the phantom. Haruhiko goes to Himeno's office and asks her about Minase, and she explains everything. Haruhiko helps with the phantom, and she is grateful to him, and she reminds them that she told them about Minase's history with her powerful childhood. She informs them that the powers were triggered by a phantom that was attacking animals at school. At that time, Minase attended a normal school, where there was no phantom hunting club. One day, the rabbit hutch at school was attacked by a phantom, and Minase was in charge of the rabbits then. Minasi's special ability awakened, and she sealed the phantom, but her ability was so powerful that her teachers and classmates became afraid. Even Minasi's parents became terrified, and in the end, she couldn't stay at home, and she was taken away by the phantom control agency. Ever since then, Minasi shut herself off, Himeno tells them that sometimes a sealed phantom can become active again, and the same phantom is what Minase is searching for. Minase despises phantoms for tearing her away from her friends and family. Himeno hoped that Minase would loosen up when she mixed with Haruhiko and his team. Haruhiko gets a call from Ruru that Minase is heading to the zoo, and he rushes to help her. Minase meets the phantom and attacks it with her newly returned voice powers, but the phantom is more powerful, and it beats her to the ground. She is almost struck when Haruhiko and the others come in and and work together to seal it. Minas is in a bad state and Reina heals her. Himeno notices that the phantom Haruhiko seals aren't the same as the one from four years ago, 
and Minasi walks away from them to probably go search for it. It starts to rain and Mai sighs and thanks Kurumi for her help. She tells her that they'll call her if they need her help again, and she stutters. Minasi walks home quietly in the rain and thinks about all that has happened. The next day, Ruru wakes Haruhiko for school, and he asks her where she is all night. She tells him she is around, and he gets ready for school. Haruhiko meets Minazi in front of his apartment and asks her what she's doing there. She thanks him for his help and rushes off while he calls after her, by calling her by name. Kurumi walks to school and thinks whether she will be able to help Mai's team out. Haruhiko says small children like to keep their favorite stuffed animals and blankets nearby, because it helps them feel safe. He says they are often called security blankets. When they are taken away, children often go into panic. Kurumi walks to school with her teddy bear, Albrecht, in hand, and thinks about how she has to help out Mai's team again. She sighs and wonders if she can, saying she doesn't want to go to school that day. But she likes art class, and she promised her friends she would trade stickers with them. She says it will be so much fun, but she really doesn't want to go, and she wonders why. Kurumi remembers how Albrecht saved her and the others the other day and asks Albrecht what she should do. She says she doesn't know if she can help Mai and her team, calling them amazing people. Kurumi looks at the road and says if she can cross the road without stepping outside the white lines, then she can do a good job helping them. She braces herself and starts to jump on the white lines. Meanwhile, Haruhiko runs after Minase and Ruru tells him that he is out of shape. They see Ruru and wave at her, but she gets really nervous and slips into the puddle of water. Haruhiko runs to save her, and they both fall into the puddle that has opened up a portal to another world. As they fall, Kurumi gets unconscious, and Albrecht slips away from her hands. When they reach the ground, Ruru wakes Haruhiko up and tells him they have landed somewhere bizarre. He stands up, and they see Kurumi across from them, and call them. Kurumi doesn't hear them, and instead calls out to Albrecht, asking where he is. Ruru tells Haruhiko that Kurumi is freaking out and they are about to go to her when three beers come to her and ask if she's Princess Kurumi, the survivor of the Bear McLaren family. Kurumi shows confusion as one of the bears tells her that Prince Salmon, heir to the Higuman family, awaits her, and she should come peacefully. They start to drag her and Ruru asks Haruhiko to do something. He says he will summon Marcosius and remembers that he left his sketchbook behind. He screams Kurumi's name and Kurumi screams Albrecht's name as Albrecht comes and shoots an arrow at one of the bears. The bear, who is their captain, falls to the ground and the other bears bend to help him. Albrecht calls Kurumi and one of the bears asks him who he is. Kurumi says his name and they realize that he is Albrecht, the mightiest knight of the Bear McLaren family. Albrecht says he will protect the princess, Kurumi, and protect her with his very life. The Higuman henchmen run away and tell Kurumi that they will get her next time. And Albrecht apologizes for leaving her side, saying he's a failure. He says from that moment, he will serve the Bear McLaren family and her. Before he can finish the sentence, Kurumi hugs him and says, she's so happy that he can talk. Haruhiko is confused about everything going on, and Albrecht says he will explain later. He takes them to his hideout and tells them all about the Bear McLaren family and how they were attacked by the Higuman clan, leaving only Princess Kurumi as their survivor. He explains to them that they vowed to protect Kurumi after their arch nemesis, Prince Salman of the Higuman clan, showed interest in marrying Kurumi. Albrecht says they lost her as they were trying to run away from Prince Salman's men. The other bear in the clan comes and hugs Kurumi, but she's so confused and Albrecht asks them to leave, he leaves the room and tells her he's going to patrol the area. Haruhiko tells Kurumi that he has figured out what's going on. He tells her that she's going through something, so this world in her mind is her escape. He asks her if she's thinking about something, and she sighs. Kurumi is about to tell him what's wrong when Albrecht comes in and tells them that they're under attack from the Higaman clan, and the prince is at the forefront. Prince Salman advances as they all run away, and Albrecht tells them to escape and that he'll stand and stall them a bit. Mai tells Reina that Himeno told her that Kurumi had to take a day off. Minasi says Kurumi has potential, but she just needs to get over her mental hang-up. One of the prince's men shoots Albrecht, and he gets injured. The Higuman's men step on the trap, and Albrecht and the others have time to run into a cave. Kurumi tells Haruhiko and Ruru about how she and Albrecht have always been together since she was born, and they get emotional. Prince Salman starts shooting at the cave, and Kurumi agrees to go meet him amidst protests from Haruhiko, Ruru, and Albrecht. She goes and refuses to be his bride and defeats him, making him admit defeat. The pressure is released from her, and they can get back to the real world. Kurumi thanks Haruhiko and they go to school. 
Mai tells them that they have a task and they need Kurumi, and Kurumi gladly agrees to help. Ruru is excited and asks Haruhiko if what's in the box beside him is a present for her. Haruhiko says it isn't and explains that inside the box, there's a radioactive material, a Geiger counter, a toxin emitter, and a cat. Ruru screams and tells her that it is scary, but Haruhiko tells her that it is a quantum physics thought experiment called Schrodinger's cat. He says, before electrons are observed, they behave as waves in a field and only behave as particles at distinct points in space when observed. He adds that in the same way, the presence or absence of radioactive decay in the box is indeterminate until the box is opened and its contents observed. But this box is rigged so the poison emitter is triggered when an atom decays. Haruhiko says, under the Copenhagen interpretation, the cat inside would both be dead because an atom decayed and alive because none had and it would exist in both states, in superposition. Ruru is confused and asks him what he means, and he explains to her saying it is impossible for a cat to be both dead and alive simultaneously. It is a thought experiment that highlights one of the issues with quantum mechanics. Haruhiko walks to school sleepily, and Ruru asks him if he's okay. He says he is tired, and she tells him this is what he gets for staying up to read every night. He says she can't blame him. He just loves to read, but once the first term is over, he is going to sleep all day. In class, the teacher talks about some books, but Haruhiko keeps struggling with sleep. Ruru wakes him and tells him that he's in class and he raises his head and sees that everyone, the teacher inclusive, is asleep. After the class, Shosuke looks at some students asleep on the field and says they are lazy, but Ruru tells him that he was asleep a few minutes ago. Haruhiko says their circadian rhythms are probably whack due to all the rain, and Ruru asks him what he means. He explains to her that it means a person's internal clock. Haruhiko says a person's bedtime goes crazy if he stays up late or doesn't get enough sun. Later at the cafeteria, Shosuke and Haruhiko get the fish for lunch, and notice and everyone else in the cafeteria does. Minasi lies outside on a bench and says to herself that she oddly feels at ease there. She hears a sound and traces it to a house that's locked which Mai later tells her is a cat mansion. It used to be a dorm, but it isn't being used anymore. The manager liked cats, so cats from all over the neighborhood flocked there. She says a lot of stray cats lived there even after it was abandoned, and every now and then, cat-loving students would pop in too. However, the slightest movements in the house would cause arguments, and a parent and teacher meeting was called. The cats were all culled and the building was made off limits. Kurumi comes in and says she wants to discuss something with them. She says she's sleepy as well and Haruhiko wonders what is going on when everyone starts bending like cats. Kurumi asks them to help her find her friend, Arena's cat, Rudolph, because he's missing. They agree to help her and make posters to hang around. They all get to the mall and are about to ask the attendant if they can hang the posters there when something distracts Reina. The rest, look at what she's staring at, see that it is cat food, and get excited. They start to behave like cats, and Haruhiko wonders what is going on. Minase goes back to the cat mansion thinking she's mistaken, but she's not. She actually sees a person holding a cat by the window. Haruhiko walks to school the next day and complains about how weird his night was. He sees some students who look like half-cats, including Reina, Mia, Minase, and Kurumi. Minase tells them that it's the work of a phantom because she heard the voice of a cat and sensed a phantom at the cat mansion, and its presence is getting stronger by the minute. They all go to the cat mansion and Kurumi hears Rudolph's voice coming from within. They go in and check every room but can't find anything. Minazi says the phantom's presence is still steady and they keep checking. Mai says they don't know if Rudolph is dead or alive, and this is similar to Schrodinger's cat. The mansion keeps confusing them, adding more floors as they go up and their heads begin to spin. They all enter a room and see Rudolph, but the phantom carries him away and traps them inside, like cats in a box. They realize that the mansion itself is the phantom, and they are taken to a room where they meet it. Reina realizes that the phantom isn't evil, and she begs it to give Rudolph back. It gives back to Rudolph after Kurumi's pleas and they get back to the real world, with all their cat issues gone. Reina makes them clean the mansion, so it can become livelier again, and Arena thanks them for helping her find her cat. Haruhiko says everyone likes springs, they are full of life, and a casual dip can give you a taste of pure bliss. He says it is said that humanity has used hot springs since time immemorial. Ancient records made it evident. Haruhiko says there are roughly 3,000 hot spring locations across Japan and roughly 100 million visits to hot springs facilities each year. He says nowadays, visiting hot springs is usually a leisure activity for tourism and skincare, but in the past, 
Hot springs were more often used medically, in treatments called hot spring therapy. He says their effects include improved circulation and parasympathetic nerve activity. They have proven to not only feel good, but to have physiological benefits as well. Haruhiko says, Sakamoto Ryoma's hot spring trip with his wife, Oreo, is regarded as the first ever Japanese honeymoon. Hot springs heal both body and soul, and they are the topic of this week's story. Haruhiko says, overseas. It's common for hot springs visitors to drink from the spring water, but some hot spring water isn't safe for drinking. Haruhiko reads a book while class is on, and Shosuke asks him what he's up to. He says he is learning a new skill called the Abamelon's finger, but it's pretty hard. The teacher stops teaching for a moment and says that it's really hot out, and just then, Ruru flies in and says, this isn't the time to be in class and asks everyone to go to the inner yard. Haruhiko looks out the window and realizes that the hot spring is the cause of the heat. Reina says, the spring is quite a mess, and Haruhiko says it's probably because of the monkey phantom sitting at the side of the hot spring. Reina says, she wonders if the phantom dug up the spring, but Minas tells them that the smaller monkeys, and even the hot spring itself, are all phantoms. Shosuke tries to get into the hot spring because of how enticing it is, and the monkey phantom throws him away. Himeno announces that school will be suspended because of the phantom and the students complain. She says the break will be called off if any of them can defeat the phantom. The student takes turns to fight the phantom, but he is stronger than all of them. Mai goes to try her luck, and everyone cheers her on, even the pervy monkey phantom. Kurumi asks if Mai will be okay, and Haruhiko tells Mai that she won't have a good foothold in the spring. She jumps into the hot spring and thinks to herself that she will attack the phantom from behind. One of the little monkeys throws a banana peel at her, and she slips and falls into the hot spring. The phantom picks her up and licks her as everyone shouts. Disgusted, Haruhiko summons Marcosius, but he can't get into the pool. Kurumi tells him that cats and dogs don't like having baths and the monkeys try to force Marcosius into the hot spring. Minesi tries to help everyone, but the hot spring is still too strong, and the heat gets hold of her and she falls to the ground. They all meet at Hymeno's office and Mai says if she can only get close to the phantom, she should be able to defeat it. Haruhiko has an idea and borrows a horse costume from the drama club. He explains to Mai about the Trojan horse and says, Odysseus built a massive wooden horse to sneak past the city of Troy's impenetrable defenses. They go into the water unnoticed by the phantom, but it sights the horse and comes closer to observe it. Mai makes a horse sound and the phantom pets the head of the horse. Mai says this is their chance to attack the phantom, but their costume begins to sink and the monkey phantom ends up licking Mai. They all go back and try to lure the pervy monkey out of the hot spring so Haruhiko can draw him, but it doesn't work. They go back into the office, and Haruhiko says he has an idea. He says female monkeys in heat have red bottoms, and they show off their butts to seduce male monkeys. Haruhiko begs Mai to be the bait with the red butt. He paints her butt, and is shocked by the texture. Mai goes out and seduces the monkey phantom and it works, but she ends up slipping on the red paint which pours on Haruhiko's sketchbook. When the monkey phantom comes out of the water, Haruhiko can't draw it, so he summons Cthulhu, an octopus to fight the phantom. The octopus blasts the monkey phantom, and he lets go of Mai who falls, and Haruhiko catches her. The octopus weakens the monkey phantom enough for them to seal it, but it starts to cry. They realize that they have to find a wife for the monkey phantom, and Himeno gives one of the students to the monkey as a bride. The student and the monkey phantom leave amidst his disapproval, and after all the students say their goodbyes. Ruru says the moon in the screen illustrates the mountains of Higashiyama. Kyoto sleeps in silence until the sudden clash of swords rouses the people. Haruhiko appears and says they will be doing a period drama for that episode. Ruru says the Edo period is ending, and with the people's dreams of peace, dashed, the land plunged into turmoil. Haruhiko asks, why people love period dramas? Are the exploits of legendary heroes exciting? To learn lessons from the past? He says these are elements, but to tell the stories of what people of yore thought and did may be part of our human instinct to enrich our collective unconscious. Ruru asks what a selective unconscious is, and he explains that it is simply stated as the idea that deep inside, we all share something in common, and the theory was developed by a psychologist named Jung long ago. A girl, Kitajima Ayumi, gives Mai and her team her script to read. The story is about two warriors that are talking on a beach and get attacked by a demon. Ayumi excitedly asks Mai what she thinks of the script, and Mai asks her what she wants them to do with it. 
Ayumi says she wants her to help the drama club by taking the stage, and Haruhiko asks her if she wants them to act. She says nobody has joined the drama club this year, she's the only member, thus, she can't enter any competitions. She begs them to help her out since they are classmates, and Haruhiko picks up the script and glances through it. Ruru says she doesn't get it, but it looks fun, and Haruhiko asks if it is based on the Ikedaya incident. He says it is factually crazy and utterly anachronistic, but Ayumi says it is fine, as long as it is fun and easy to understand because one can't get anywhere, being a goody two-shoes all the time. Ayumi says sometimes one has to be bold because that is adolescence, and that's what it means to be young. Haruhiko whispers to Mai that Ayumi is really passionate, and Mai agrees, saying when it comes to theatrics, she is. Reina says she hasn't acted before, and Ayumi pleads with her and tells her she will buy her lunch. Reina quickly tells her that she is in. Ayumi tells the others that when the monkey phantom appeared, she lent them the costumes, so it's now their turn to help out. Mai sighs and agrees. They put on costumes and Haruhiko is cast as Shinsengumi Vice Chief Hijikata Toshizo, Reina is Captain Okita Soji, Ruru is Chief Kondo, Isami, and Mai is the phantom hostage from town. Mai asks why she can't be the commander, and Ayumi tells her she is going for a surprise. She announces Kurumi as Sakamoto Ryoma and Minase as Okada Izo, the assassin. Kurumi nervously says she doesn't know what she's doing, and Ayumi says she herself will play the bad phantom. Minas asks why she is getting roped into it, and Ayumi begs her saying, she doesn't have enough people, and having cute girls on stage max, her look good. Minasi senses a phantom, and tells the others. She says it is aggressive, so she will play along with it. Ayumi says she has no problem, as long as they all act, and she thanks them. Less than some minutes later, Ayumi is already shouting and throwing their scripts at them, unimpressed by the performance. They tell her that they haven't even learned their lines, and she asks them to go home. They all walk home, exhausted, and Haruhiko says the drama club is more tedious than the sports club. Ayumi apologizes for working with them too much, and says the academy has never gotten past the preliminary stage, and she wants to fulfill the wishes of her predecessors. They rehearse well the next day and even visit the original site of the Ikadaya, but the phantom they were waiting for never showed. The day of the competition comes, and they all get nervous, but Minase keeps staring at Ayumi. Shosuke and others who helped with the sound and lighting say they are ready, and the Hosea Academy Drama Club is called on stage. Some minutes into the play, they discover that Ayumi isn't a real student, but a phantom. She confesses to have manipulated their memories. They all say they will accept her because she's their friend, and the audience think it's part of the show, and applauds. The show continues, but Ayumi gets into it, and the scene becomes real and even the audience is drawn in as well. Ayumi abducts Mai, and they search the whole village looking for her. They find her, and all have to fight Ayumi the Phantom to get her back. They defeat the Phantom, get Mai back, and everything goes back to normal. Mai and her teams keep helping Ayumi with the drama club, but she keeps yelling at them, and Mina says they should have sealed her. Haruhiko says, summer makes you think of swimming at the beach, the buzzing of cicadas, and haunted houses, but the most exciting of all is a fireworks festival. He says during the Edo period, they were first used to mourn those who died of disease and famine, and to ward off evil spirits, which began the tradition of fireworks festivals. He says these days anyone can watch firework festivals on TV, but nothing beats the experience of watching them in person, the sense of presence that comes with sound, the shaking, and the scent. Haruhiko says the sense of unity that comes from looking up at fireworks with others as they bloom in the sky, and the novelty sometimes gives people the will to say things they wouldn't usually say. It is a classic summer date for people with lives. Haruhiko looks for his necktie and trips on the books scattered on the floor as Ruru looks at the flyer for the fireworks festival. She says there will be lots of food stands at the fireworks festival that day, including shaved ice, cotton candy, candy apples, and ramen. She keeps talking about food, and Haruhiko mistakenly steps on her. She shouts his name, and he tells her she's so small, so he doesn't see her. He finds his necktie on the bookshelf and runs to school because he is really late. A witch phantom walks on the streets quietly, and smiles while Ruru sulks, and says if she isn't small, she will be able to finish an entire bottle of Ramun. Ruru keeps talking, and isn't aware that the phantom is seated beside her. The witch, Phantom asks her if she should grant her wish, and Ruru gets scared and hides behind a can. She asks her not to be afraid. 
that she is a benevolent witch phantom. She says she is just a little unusual. She goes around granting phantoms their wishes. Ruru says, it is too good to be true because the witch phantom might want something in return, but she gives her her word saying that's the reason for her being so. She will grant her wish, no strings attached. The witch phantom asks Ruru what her wish is, and she says she wants to be human-sized. The witch tells her that she won't be able to fly, and if anyone finds out that she's the one, she will return to her original size immediately. Ruru panics and says she knows someone who is perceptive about phantoms and Manace will recognize her fast. But the witch phantom laughs and tells her that she will set up certain arrangements for after she has become human. The witch phantom grants her wish and leaves. Ruru is excited and heads to school where she is a transfer student in Haruhiko's class, and she introduces herself as Natsuno Ramune. The teacher asks Haruhiko to guide her. Ruru? Now Natsuno has a hard time with balance and switching from phantom to human, so she flies out of the room and is carefree in class. Being a cute girl, Shosuke says she's bound to be popular, so it isn't a surprise that various clubs invite her to join them. Natsuno tries them all and fails. Then she tells Haruhiko that she wants to try out his club, and Haruhiko takes her there. Mai sees her and wonders who she is. And Reina tells her that Natsuno is a transfer student who just transferred to Haruhiko's class. Haruhiko takes her to Himeno's office and says, Natsuno doesn't have any special abilities, but she is interested in observing, so he brought her there. Himeno introduces herself and tells her to make herself at home. Haruhiko introduces the rest of his teammates, and Natsuno gives a bogus story about her past. They all buy it, and Himeno asks them to keep a keen eye out for phantoms at the fireworks festival, but also have fun. On their way to the festival, Reina asks Haruhiko where Ruru is but he says he doesn't know, and Kurumi hopes she comes. The witch phantom sees a firework phantom and grants him a wish. Haruhiko and Natsuno are separated from Mai and the others, and he helps her massage her feet. She asks him about Ruru, and he tells her some things after which he says he will get Ruru some Ramun. There is chaos, as the firework phantom that was granted a wish comes and attacks the festival saying he wants to go out with a bang. Natsuno sees the pendant on its neck and goes to find the witch phantom, while Haruhiko and the others take care of the fireworks phantom. The fireworks phantom captures Haruhiko and the witch. Phantom says she didn't know he would take it this far. Natsuno tells everyone who she is so we can turn back to Ruru and fly and save Haruhiko. She goes up there and speaks to the fireworks phantom to go higher and he drops Haruhiko and goes higher. They all cry, thinking Ruru is dead, but she comes back. Haruhiko apologizes for stepping on her, and she steps on his finger and says, they're even. There is a sandstorm, and Mai protects a little boy from a monster. She introduces herself as Kawakami Mai, the phantom hunting mom. She says, everyone must be wondering how she ended up like this, and she starts narrating from a few days ago. They all have a meal, and Reina apologizes for eating a lot, but Minase tells her it is a reward for her hard work, so she shouldn't apologize for it. They look around them and see different kids giving their parents a tough time, and Ruru asks the team if they were like that when they were kids. Reina says she used to get in trouble a lot for being picky about food, and her parents were strict. Ruru asks Minasi, but she says she doesn't remember, and Mai says she doesn't remember as well. That night, Haruhiko works late and opens a drawer to search for something and finds a milk chocolate box instead. He opens the box and finds his treasures from elementary school and gets excited. He sees his essay in it and reads it. He sighs peacefully, wondering if he indeed was the one who wrote that. Haruhiko goes to bed and wakes up as a child. He wonders why everything is so big and why the housemaid didn't wake him for school. All of Haruhiko's clothes are large, and he wears his elementary uniform because that's the only thing that fits. He runs to school and enters his class, but no one seems to know him there. Haruhiko goes out and sits on the steps, and that is where Kurumi finds him. She confirms that he knows his class but doesn't know anyone there, and he says yes, and it doesn't seem like anyone knows him either. Haruhiko tells her his name and she is shocked. Kurumi takes him to the teacher, and she checks his name but his name isn't on the student list. The teacher goes to ask other teachers, and Kurumi asks him if he is sure about his name and the elementary school he attends, and he says yes. She asks him for his bag and checks it and sees his sketchbook inside. Kurumi gasps and wonders if this little boy could actually be Haruhiko, and she takes him to Himeno's office. Himeno says he looks like Haruhiko when he was in elementary school, and his belongings are the same as well. Kurumi says she believes the boy is the real Haruhiko. Haruhiko can't remember any of them, including Ruru, 
and Ruru points out that she met him in middle school. Mainase and Reina begin to ask him a series of questions, and he gets nervous, but Mai holds his hands and tells him that everything will be okay. She says they will get him back to normal, and he blushes. Haruhiko tells her to stop treating him like a child, and she squeezes his cheeks and tells him that he is cute. Mai asks him if he was like this when he woke up, and he tells her it's like metamorphosis. Minasi looks at him and says, he has been a nerd since elementary school. Hamino asks him to attend his normal classes because it is probably a phantom thing, and that might get him back to normal. In his class, the teacher announces that Haruhiko woke up as a child and he introduces him. All the girls fawn over him, and Shosuke cries saying, Haruhiko is in his prime. The team follows him to his house after school, but Minase can't sense a phantom. Ruru suggests that someone stay with him, and after much talk, Mai invites Haruhiko to come over. She gets him clothes and food, cleans his room, and then realizes that taking care of a child is a lot, because Haruhiko is annoying. Since then, Mai's life has been spent alongside young Haruhiko, and this began to tell on her. She started having eye bags and financial issues, and she asks Himeno if she could take care of Haruhiko, but she says she stays at Alayashiki late at night, and Reina promises to get to the root of the matter so Mai will get better. Mai takes him home, and he is awfully obedient because he feels bad about inconveniencing everyone. There is a thunderstorm, and Haruhiko is scared, but Mai comforts him, and says, she knows he has been alone most of his life. He says his dad travels a lot for work, and his mum left. Mai promises to take him to the park the next day, and she does. They play together, and suddenly a Sandman phantom appears. Mai asks Haruhiko to stay behind, and she goes to seal it, but she gets tired and faints. Haruhiko cries that he can't do anything to help her, and he turns back to normal. He summons Cthulhu, who blasts the Sandman Phantom with water. They take him back home, and Haruhiko shows him the note that probably triggered it. Mai reads the letter, and realizes that Haruhiko just wanted his fake essay to come true, and that's why his abilities got into his mind, like Reina's. Haruhiko asks what a phantom is. Much about them remains unknown, but they are thought to be hallucinations, or the man-made manifestations of such. Ruru asks if some phantoms are made by people, and Haruhiko says it is believed that phantoms owe their existence largely to the human subconscious and language centers. Ruru asks if that collective subconscious thing from Jung also has something to do with it, and Haruhiko says that Jungian psychology also describes a concept of archetypes. He says everyone's mind carries impressions of great mothers, wise old men, themselves as the opposite sex and the dark unconscious aspects of their own personality. Ruru asks if that is where phantoms come from, and Haruhiko says that's not all, that anything humans can imagine can become a phantom, including folk tales and fairy tales. The team works together to defeat two phantoms, and everyone cheers them from the classes above. It is mid-Juli, and before they knew it, their team had the highest grade as in phantom hunting. Mai tells others that summer break is coming. They have been boosy lately, and she totally forgot. Ruru asks Reina if she is going to the beach for training camp, and she says she got permission from her parents to attend the camp. Haruhiko asks if Reina is doing well with her parents now, and she says she is. They pay more attention to how she feels. Minese observes a device, and Ruru asks her if she knows what it is. Minese says it is a communication device for Alayashiki servers, and one can't have access to the Alayashiki servers without it. Minese asks how he got it, and he asks them if they remember when they went to the defunct Alayashiki factory, and Minese asks if he saw it on the floor. Some girls approach her and tell her that they are fans of hers, and they would like to take a photo with her. They take the pictures with her and Minasi goes back to her table and puts her head down. She tells the others that the fans even send her letters, and Mai tells her not to pretend like she doesn't like it. Haruhiko says he works hard too, so why can't he also be popular? Ruru praises him, but he cries and says, it isn't enough. Haruhiko says, it is almost summer break and things are looking up, or so they thought. Some kids walk along a road in another district and talk about how there have been phantom sightings, and people with special abilities are being attacked. One of them stops the others because he sees a phantom. The phantom moves close to them, and they get ready to attack it, but she defeats them. In the academy, Himeno announces to the students that three students with special abilities from another school were attacked yesterday by an unidentified phantom. The phantom is called Enigma, and its origins and characteristics are unknown. She says the only thing they know is that the victims all have their special abilities stolen. The students gasp and express shock, 
and Himeno says the Phantom Control Team is on it, and they should try to go home in as many groups as they can. Mai and her team go home together and hear the screams of some of their mates. They ask Reina to watch Kurumi and go to check it out. They see the beach girls from their class fighting the Enigma, and one of the girls asks them to run. The Enigma takes all the special abilities of the beach girls, and Mai's team starts to attack. Haruhiko asks them to go back, and he summons Cthulhu. Haruhiko draws the Enigma and seals it, but she disappears from the sketchbook. They all wonder if the Enigma is gone forever, but there is no way they can tell. The beach girls are taken to the Alayashiki Hospital. It is the hospital of the establishment, but their special abilities still don't come back. Even after some days, the Enigma doesn't show up, and they wonder if it will ever come back. Summer break starts and is stuck on his computer working. Ruru asks him to leave the computer and go hang out with his friends, but he receives a call that shocks him. It is from his mom. Haruhiko meets her and she keeps asking her questions, but he ignores them and asks her why she left. She doesn't reply and tells him that she separated from her other husband some years ago. She stands up to leave and Haruhiko runs to meet her. From that day, she starts to live with him. Haruhiko is the happiest the days he is with his mom, and Ruru asks him if he is sure she is really his mom. The others ask after him, and Ruru tells them about his mom. They see them pass by, and Minase tells them that she senses an odd aura from the woman, and Mai says they should report the issue to Himeno. Mai and the others visit Haruhiko at his house, and his mom finds a way to captivate them, but Ruru isn't buying it. Mai steps aside to receive a call from Himeno. Himeno tells her that Haruhiko's mother was reported missing, so the woman that is there with them is the Enigma. The Enigma appears behind her and hits her. They try to stop her, but she takes Haruhiko's special abilities, leaves his mom's body, and flies away. In the Aliyashiki hospital, Haruhiko and his other teammates sit beside his mom's bedside. He says she won't wake up and it's probably a side effect of the enigma taking over her mind and memories. The others look at him with sad eyes and Reina asks if it is, until the enigma is sealed before she can wake up. Himeno comes in and tells them that like she said, she will help out at the Alayashiki research facility, and if she learns anything she will let them know at once, and Mai tells her to please do. Mai and Reina watch the news, and it is announced that Enigma, still on the loose, attacked three more people with special abilities the previous day, and so far there have been 30 victims. Haruhiko comes to them and tells them that they should get going. They look at him with pity, and Reina says he is holding back. Mai says Haruhiko finally meets his mom, and she is a phantom on top of that. He loses his abilities, so he must be hurting. On his way out, a man stops him and says it's nice to meet him. He introduces himself as Haruhiko's mom's current husband. They sit to talk, and Mai and the others sit some meters close to them. The man tells Haruhiko that he met his mom about two years ago, and he never asked her about her past, but she seemed to have some complicated circumstances, and she seems to have been through a hard time. He shows her a book that his mom always stares at, and he gives him the book to look inside. Inside the book is a picture of young Haruhiko and his mom, and he tells him that she looks at the picture every day because she has been wanting to see him all this time. The man says she felt she didn't have the right to, and she was wrought with guilt, gives him the book, and leaves. Haruhiko goes back to Mai and the others and tells them that he feels better, and Mai tells them that they should go visit Ruru. They meet Ruru at my home and she greets them politely. She asks him how his mother is doing and he tells her that she's better. Reina whispers and asks Haruhiko if that's how she usually acts, and he says, yeah. Ruru says she was so worried and she hopes his mom gets better, and Mai tells her that she can come with them. She says she can't come because she will just be a nuisance, and she goes to make tea. Kurumi says Ruru is acting weird. Like Haruhiko and Mai says she probably feels the effects of Haruhiko losing his special abilities. Ruru comes in with bags, and Reina wants to help her, but she refuses, and she says she will pour them some tea. Mindset helps the men at the factory to figure out where Enigma is, but she says she can't sense anything. Minis asks if their intel has picked up anything, but he says no, but feels like the brass knows something. Ruru keeps serving Haruhiko and the others, and Mai says she likes the new Ruru. Minase comes and starts looking for the communication device that they found. She asks Haruhiko if he has fixed it, and he says no, that it isn't easy. Kurumi says Albrecht can try and fix it, he fixes it, and even hacks the password. What they see on the server shocks them. Different information about phantoms, and there's information about enhanced phantoms. Enigma. It said the scientists placed human DNA into phantoms to enhance their powers for different strange purposes, and Enigma was a failed attempt that rebelled. 
Manasi says the Alayashiki intend to feign ignorance to the end. Minas gets a call that Enigma is at the research facility, where Haruhito's mum is, and they all rush there. Enigma is blowing up everywhere, and Haruhiko wants to go in on his own, but Mai doesn't let him. Himeno comes and drives them to the rear gate so they can evacuate the patients. She explains that Enigma is after the research files on phantoms, and now that she has Haruhiko's summoning abilities, she can control phantoms at will. They get there, and Minase senses Enigma. They ask Haruhiko to stand aside, and they face Enigma. Enigma beats them to the ground, and Haruhiko runs to help, but he is helpless without his powers. Himeno tells him that he can regain his powers if he does the same thing Enigma did to take his powers, it works, and he weakens Enigma by summoning Marcosius and Cthulhu, who have now grown. Mai and the others join in and seal the Enigma. Everyone rejoices and Haruhiko reunites with his mother for real.